Hello everyone, welcome to your English session. Today we are going to deal with writing, which is the third section of the National Baccalaureate exam. So by the end of this session, you will be able to practice writing skills for a National Baccalaureate exam sample. So let's start. So the writing section takes 10 points out of 40. Here we have two tasks. Task number one, it takes four points out of ten. Complete the following paragraph about your favorite sport. And task number two takes six points out of ten. Respond to this email. Hello everyone. My two sons spend too much time chatting and playing video games. I'm really worried about their studies and social life. What should I do? Please help worried father. So let's deal with the first task. Here you need to complete the following paragraph about your favorite sports. So it means you have a paragraph about your favorite sports and you need to give reasons why you prefer this sport. So let's review paragraph writing. A paragraph is a group of sentences that discuss only one main idea. Sentences in a paragraph should be organized and coherent and should all be related to a single topic. To write a, a good paragraph, you should include three main elements. Do you still remember them? Yes? Yes. We have topic sentence, we have supporting sentences, and we have concluding sentence. So the topic sentence is the first sentence in the paragraph. It opens the paragraph and it states the main idea of the paragraph. Supporting sentences develop the topic sentence. They give more information about the topic sentence and they can give facts, details or examples. Concluding sentence is the last sentence in the paragraph. It usually restates the topic sentence in different words or summarizes the main points of the paragraph. So this is the first sentence that you are provided with. My favorite sport is, I prefer this sport for the following reasons. First, so you just need to fill in the blanks with your favorite sport. I chose playing basketball and you can choose your favorite sport. My favorite sport is playing basketball. I prefer this sport for the following reasons. So this is the topic sentence and we need supporting sentences. For supporting sentences you need to give ideas and some details. So here I would like you to match the ideas to their details. So here are the details. A. It builds and strengthens bones and muscles. It boosts the immune system and it decreases the risk of heart disease. B. It helps me overcome stress and it increases my self-discipline, concentration and decision making. Being a member of a team gives me lasting friendships and connections. D. Being a good player and a member of my high school team increases my self-esteem. E. It is a fast-paced game that involves a good deal of jumping and running, which is a fantastic way to exercise. So these are the details. And here are the ideas. I would like you to match the ideas with their details. Number one, basketball is a team sport that enhances social life. So does it go with A, B, C, D or E? D. 
Did you find the answer? Yes, it goes with C. Being a member of a team gives me lasting friendships and connections. Number two, basketball provides me with an excellent full body workout. Is it A, B, D, or E? Did you find the answer? Yes, it goes with E. It is a fast-paced game that involves a good deal of jumping and running, which is a fantastic way to exercise. Number three, basketball offers amazing health benefits. Does it go with A, B, or D? Yes, it goes with A, because it builds and strengthens bones and muscles, it boosts the immune system, and it decreases the risk of heart disease. Number four, Playing basketball develops my mental health. Does it go with B or with D? Yes, it goes with B. It helps me overcome stress and it increases my self-discipline, concentration and decision-making. Number five, playing basketball truly boosts my overall confidence. So it goes with D. Being a good player and a member of my high school team increases my self-esteem. So here are the ideas and the details. So let's start writing our paragraph. The topic sentence is, my favorite sport is playing basketball. I prefer this sport for the following reasons. First, basketball is a team sport that enhances social life skills. Being a member of a team gives me lasting friendships and connections. Second, basketball provides me with an excellent full body workout. It is a fast paced game that involves a great deal of jumping and running, which is a fantastic way to exercise. Third, it offers amazing health benefits. It builds and strengthens bones and muscles. It boosts the immune system and it decreases the risk of heart disease. Moreover, playing basketball develops my mental health. It helps me overcome stress and it increases my self-discipline, concentration and decision-making. Last but not least, playing basketball truly boosts my overall confidence. Being a good player and a member of my high school team increases my self-esteem. And finally, we need a concluding sentence. In brief, I enjoy playing basketball because it provides me with many physical, mental and social benefits. So when you are dealing with a paragraph, pay attention that you need to write a topic sentence which gives the main idea of the paragraph. Your supporting sentences should be related to the topic sentence and they can give details. And the concluding sentence can restate the topic sentence or summarizes the main points of the supporting sentence, sentences. So this is our paragraph. And please make sure to include appropriate linking words. Task number two. Respond to this email. Hello everyone. My two sons spend too much time chatting and playing video games. I'm really worried about their studies and social life. What should I do? Please help, worried father. So this is an email from the worried father and he is requesting help about his sons who spend too much time chatting and playing video games. He is worried about their studies and their social life. 
and we need to give him some pieces of advice. So this is the space provided for your email. You already have the opening which or the greeting, dear worried father, and you have a very important reminder that you should not write your name or sign your email. Please remember this. During your exam, do not write your name or sign your email. So, when we deal with email, there are two types of emails. There is formal email and informal email. A formal email is an email sent or received for administrative, educational or professional purposes. Informal email is an email sent or received for personal, friendly or family purposes. It means you send it to your friends or to your family members. If you want to write an email, you need to consider using an opening or the greeting, introductory sentence, body of the email, conclusion and the closing. Here I'm not going to deal with your name or the signature because you do not need to add them in your, on your exam paper. So the opening you can use expressions like hi, hello, for example, dear John, dear sir or madam. For the introductory sentence, you can say, how are you? Thanks for your email. It was great to hear from you. I'm writing to ask for some information. For the body of the email, you have the main part, main paragraph or the main paragraphs of the email. The conclusion, you can write, for example, write soon, keep in touch. I hope to hear from you soon. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And for the closing, you can say regards, best wishes, sincerely, yours faithfully. Your choice of these expressions depend on whether you are writing a formal email or an informal email. So let's match some informal expressions with their corresponding formal ones. So let's learn the difference between formal and informal expressions. So here are formal expressions. Thank you. Dear sir or madam. I would rather not. Sincerely, yours faithfully. I would like to apologize for. I would appreciate it if you. Would you happen to know? Please do not hesitate to contact me. I hope to receive news from you soon. Unfortunately, I will not be able to. I would be very grateful if you could. So here we have formal expressions. And these are the informal expressions and I would like you to match the informal expressions with their corresponding formal ones. So number one, we have hello. It goes with which answer? Yes, you can use it instead of dear sir or madam. So you can write hello for an informal email and you can write dear sir or madam in a formal email. Number two, thanks. It goes with thank you. That's very good. Number three, sorry for. So what is the corresponding formal expression for sorry for? Did you find it? Yes, it's E. I would like to apologize for. Number four, can you? Now what is the formal expression for can you? Did you find it? Yes, it's I would be very grateful if you could. Number five, I can't. So I can't goes with which expression? Did you find it? Yes, it goes with unfortunately I will not be able to. It goes with J. Number six, do you know? 
What is the formal expression of do you know? Did you find it? Yes, it's a G. Would you happen to know? Number seven, I don't want to. What is the formal expression for I don't want to? It is C, I would rather not. Eight, please get in touch. What is the formal expression for please get in touch? Yes, it's obvious. It's H, please do not hesitate to contact me. Number nine, please, I want you to. The formal expression for please, I want you to is F, I would appreciate it if you. 10, write back soon. This is the informal expression of I hope to receive news from you soon. And last one, best wishes or all the best. The formal expression is D, sincerely or yours faithfully. So here you have formal expressions and informal expressions. Here, I would like you to match the parts of the email to their labels. We have opening, which is the greeting. We have introductory sentence, first paragraph, second paragraph, conclusion, and closing. So here are the parts. A, yours faithfully. Now, what is yours faithfully? Is it one, two, three, four, five, or six? Yes? Can you guess the answer? Yes. It's closing. Dear worried father, this is the greeting. So it is number one. It is the opening. C, thank you for writing to us and requesting our help. So what is this? Did you find it? Yes, it's number two. It's the introductory sentence. D, we hope that these recommendations are useful for you and we are looking forward to receiving your feedback. So what is this? Three, four or five? It is five. It is the conclusion. So we are left with the first paragraph and the second paragraph. E. Social media and video games can be excellent sources of education and entertainment for your children. But too much screen time can have unhealthy side effects on their studies and social life. So this is, can you guess the answer? Yes, it's the first paragraph. Here are some recommendations that you need to consider. So this is definitely the second paragraph. So can you guess, is this email an informal email or a formal email? You have the expression, yours faithfully, dear worried father, and you have, we are looking forward to receiving your feedback. So is it informal or formal? Yes, this is a formal email. So let's write our email. Dear worried father, thank you for writing to us and requesting our help. Social media and video games can be excellent sources of education and entertainment for your children. But too much screen time can have unhealthy side effects on their studies and social life. Here are some recommendations that you need to consider. First of all, accept that gaming is fun for your children and chatting is a way of connecting with their friends. Second, make sure you are setting a good example at home by moderating your own use of technology. Third, monitor your children's screen time 
and set limits to ensure they are not spending too much time in front of a screen. Moreover, engage them in interesting physical activities and make sure they are getting enough sleep. Finally, ensure they have more fulfilling family time. We hope that these recommendations are useful for you and we are looking forward to receiving your feedback. Yours faithfully. And please remember, do not write your name or sign your email. So this is the end of the writing section of this National Baccalaureate exam. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.